Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? NFL football big game previews for week number 11. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. If you have not listened before, we appreciate you being here, of course. Get them jams in. Absolutely, absolutely. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. The website has got all of our podcast picks, uh, previews, videos, social media platforms, etc. Everything about us you can find on the website. So go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. You can also enter the football pick contest. It's free to enter. You get prizes every week. Every week has a different winner. So go check it out. It's free to sign up. Put your name in, put your email in, get your picks in. It's all multiple choice, easy stuff. Like, you don't even have to really know what you're doing. You just got to get lucky and pick 10 games right. That's right. So, go check it out. Do your thing. Uh, You can also make sure that you are uh, subscribed to us. I I can't talk. We're doing this too late. That's right. We're doing it too late. That's what it is. Uh, If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Make sure you comment. Tell us what big games you like this week. Tell us who you think is going to win. If we want some predictions, tell me about the NFL in Week 11. That's what we want to know. Tell us what you think. Make sure you subscribe. Share the show out. If you're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you leave a nice five-star written review. We read those things. We'll read it on the air, especially if you are entertaining and funny. We always like those. So we do appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Of course, let's go ahead and jump into... The biggest games of the weekend. Yeah, first, Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They bring you the show every single week. Almost every day, right? Every day? No. But, we don't have a show on Tuesdays. Uh, that's right. But I'll tell you this. A lot of podcasts. A lot of content. Oh, yeah. And Tunica, Mississippi brings all of that to you. You can go read more information about all of their sports books, all the fun things they got going on down there over at tunicatravel.com. Let's fire in. Game number one. Monday Night Football. Pretty big game. Division game. The Chiefs lost to the Titans last week. That's right. And now they got to go to Mexico City and deal with Phillip Rivers and the Chargers. Yeah. Now, tell me what you think about this. Man, I, I, I don't I, have a feel for this game at all. I have I no either. idea what I'm looking at when I watch the Chiefs play football. Patrick Holmes, not a problem. Okay. The offense, I don't think, is a problem. That defense is bad. That defense cannot stop the run. And if the Chargers were watching, that's what I was about to say, they got three running backs that they could just keep handing the ball off to, little dump passes, short passes, everything underneath, and and just matriculate the ball down the field. Get your four yards a touch. Get your six yards a touch. Get your three yards a touch. And over and over and over again, just first down them to death. Keep Patrick Mahomes on the on the bench. Yeah. If you're the Chiefs, you got to find a way to make a stop. That line seemed a little high. It's at four. Yeah, I thought I thought it was I thought it was. I don't know, man. I it it's probably right. I didn't like it enough to touch it to go one way or another. Um, if it had been a little higher, I'd have probably taken the Chargers. Been a little lower, I'd have probably taken the Chiefs. So it's probably right. Do you think we will ever see a a total that is under 50 points for Pat Mahomes. This one's sitting at 52, oh, yeah. 52 and a half. Oh, yeah. It, they're going to play the Patriots this year. That total will be under 50. You think so? Yes, sir. I think people think the Patriots will score. And and they'll think that the Chiefs will at least put up like 21. I think that total will be under 50. That's crazy. I could That's, be wrong. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, you, like I, I, you, you're probably right. I think that total will be under fifty. But I don't. I don't know that he's there had one. Many, but there aren't many teams that play great defense in the NFL anymore. No, you're right about that. So that's that's the reason why that's one team that a does, and Bill makes it his life's mission to take your best weapon away. Yeah. And and while they have tons of weapons, I think the Patriots' defense have a lot of weapons as well. Now you. I think so. you're right. Uh, can the Chargers muster up enough of a running game? To be able to win this. Oh, they absolutely can. 
Will they? I don't know, man. The charge. I, I would almost call them Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I, I don't even know that they're the same person turning into two different people. <laughs> I mean, that, that, I don't I don't even know what you would call them. I uh, I think the Chiefs come out motivated in this game. I, yeah, I'm going to go a, ahead and – That's a big L. I'm going to go ahead and make my pick. I, I think I'm taking the Chiefs minus four. Andy Reid coming off a loss like that, that's tough. That's yeah. tough. And the way they lost, too. Um. Yeah, I think I'd do the same thing. All right. I think I'd, I'd ride Pat Mahomes and I'd ride the Chiefs right now more than I'd ride the Chargers. That's I, a team uh, that just – they got stink on them. Yeah. Yeah, they certainly do. Certainly do. Game number two is the Texans at the Ravens. Ravens a four-point favorite. Total is 49.5 on this one. This is M- MVP showdown? I think so. I-, I think this is the MVP showdown. I know that Russell Wilson has been incredible. And he's still in this conversation. And and if they ever decide to give it to somebody not a quarterback, Christian McCaffrey has been incredible. But I like when – I think there's a three-horse race right now. We got a yeah. Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, uh, uh, a battle already. Lamar won that one. Now, Watson saying, hey, I'm here. A lot of people talking about <laughs> like, me. Pay attention to me. But uh, but I think he's pretty damn good, and I think he's got some weapons, and uh, and I think they're going to have a lot to say about what happens um, with Lamar. I I, I kind of like the over here, man. I think both these quarterbacks are going to show out, but on a show, I think they're going to score. I mean, forty nine and a half. I, I was surprised to not see it in the fifties. I thought I, so too. I, I don't think the the Texans defense is very good. No, and and the Ravens defense isn't great. No, no, neither of these defense these both of these teams used to be modeled. From the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I think the, the perception for They're these two teams anymore. is that they are tough, hard-nosed yes. defensive football teams. That's right. And while they do have playmakers on defense, that's not what they're built around. Not anymore. The game has changed. Yeah. They're built around these two young quarterbacks that are incredible talents. I mean, the, these two teams are Alabama and LSU. That, yeah, that they it's, used to play football one way, and then they got quarterbacks, and they started playing it a different yeah, way. Yeah, they, they swapped it around. Who would have thought? You got a trigger man, you can shoot. Yeah, it kind of changes uh, changes things up. All right, let's move on. Game number three. Oh, who, who are we picking here? Oh, yeah, good, good idea, good idea. Uh, I'm going to roll Ravens minus four. I'm giving the Texans. I, I think they had the. You think they win? I do think they can win. Okay. The I'll Ravens. Like the Ravens look incredible. This is this is. I mean, it's it's kind of not smart to step in front of that train. Texans had a bye week. Watson. I think Watson. Listening to everybody for the last two weeks blow up uh, Lamar, I think he's got a lot to prove today. I think you might be right. I mean, it, I, I'm going to go opposite, but yeah, it could. I could 100 percent see it. Yeah, 100 percent see it. All right, let's move into game number three. Your boys, the yes, New sir. England Patriots, minus three and a half at the Philadelphia Eagles. Total 44 and a half. Now, because they're playing on the road, my initial instinct was. Add, this may not mean that much. I may not want to touch this. The last time the Patriots were three and a half point favorite, it was two weeks ago, and they got embarrassed by the Ravens. But they are coming off of a loss. They are coming off of a bye week. And they are playing wins. against the Eagles, who. Carson Wentz, not Lamar Jackson. Don't know if you know that or not. Carson Wentz. Not Nick Foles. No, no, not Nick Foles either. Here's the deal. You got the two things going for you. A, Bill, if the Patriots are going to take a loss, which at some point in time they're going to, they don't care about going undefeated anymore. They they, they didn't want that. He got the loss when he needed it, which yeah. was right before the bye week. So now these guys get two weeks of a cussing, and he's going to have them fired up, ready to go. Um, The other thing that, that you got going on is so, so two weeks to repair, off a loss, everything lines up, Bill having things exactly the way he wants them. But here's the other thing. This is a team that Bill has taken over the defense. Two years ago in the Super Bowl, the Patriots defense made the Eagles punt one time. Yeah. I think Bill is going to make sure this Eagles team punts and punts and punts. <laughs> and maybe throws a couple of interceptions because Wentz is going to do that. Maybe cause a couple of fumbles because they're going to do that. 
he he wants to I think this, maybe embarrass this team on their home field. I don't know that he'll be able to embarrass them, but I think he's going to try to embarrass them. I could see it. I think there is there will be no take the foot off the gas, and there will be no uh, letting up or, or or giving in at all on defense. I think they're going to keep the pressure on the entire game. Carson Wentz going to start seeing ghosts. Don't mic him up. He'll embarrass himself. Yeah. Uh, That's both, what I think. We're both rolling Pats minus okay. three and a half. This is my team, and I'm a little biased, Mr. Smidge. Yeah, but I, I, your assessment on them is pretty, pretty. I'm pretty spot honest on. when I think it's going to be close, and you got to worry, and you know. Yeah. Now but, you you can read this team. The total is forty four and a half. Um, seems kind of high. It. I thought it was pretty close. <laughs> Because I, I don't expect the Eagles to score a lot. I don't either, but I think the Patriots, not that the Patriots are going to score a ton, but I do think that offense has had two weeks to get some guys healthy. I don't know, is that offensive line going to be better or not? If the offensive line is better, the Pats are going to score a lot more than they've been. Okay. And at some point in time, they got to get their foot out of their ass. <laughs> yeah. They got to go. That's true. They got to go. Let's uh, let's move on. Game number four, Thursday night. Another one of you. One, uh, yeah, uh, another, yeah. Another bunch of your boys. These are my boys. I, I still love them. I'm mad at them, but I still love them. The Browns are a three-point favorite at home against the Steelers. Total is 40 on this one. Now, obviously, I'm going Steelers here. The Steelers defense has looked fantastic. Um, and that doesn't necessarily spell good things for Baker Mayfield. No, it doesn't. It, Freddie Kitchens, is he's just in over his head. Yes, that's an understatement, by the way. I mean, you... That, that understatement. Now, the Browns did get a win over the Bills last week. Um, what, are you, what are you pulling up here? Uh, go, no, you keep talking. You're fine. So, Minka Fitzpatrick, in this, in this Steelers defense, okay. has been unbelievable. Pick six. I, it feels like every week. That's right. Scoop and score. Regularly, the guy is he is playing the Troy Palomalu role in this defense. Agree, and he fits it perfectly. Uh, he did not fit what they were trying to do in Miami, and him along with Devin Bush and all of those guys. I expect the Steelers to be able to score enough and to uh, generate enough points to be able to win this football game. I'm taking the Steelers to win this one outright. Um, because I don't trust the Browns to be able to. I understand the Browns have more firepower. Yes. And they've got much more talent on the offensive side for sure. Yes. But there is something to be said for chemistry and for play calling, et cetera. And I, I don't think the Browns have any of it right now. Because the Steelers have so much of it. Just that my quarterback thought. has started a lot with this wide receiving core and this running back. Tell me, tell me what you think. I think Freddie Kitchens is the worst quarterback in the league, or coach in the league. I, I do, I absolutely do. I think he's in over his head is is an understatement. Is uh, is Baker the worst quarterback in the league? Well, no, he's not the worst quarterback in the league, but he's not a great quarterback. But but neither is neither is Rudolph. No, no, no. Like it, Rudolph is not even close. Yeah, I think both of these teams are very similar. I think the I think the Browns defense is gonna give y'all hell more than anybody else lately. This is the first defense that that they've played. And uh I don't know, man. I mean I think this line is fishy. I just think it's weird. It makes it makes no sense as to why they were being favored. Yeah, you might be right. So you might be right. I would I would take my Browns. I think they're figuring it out. Baker hadn't turned the ball over in three weeks. You know, maybe he's fixed some of those things. Last week, what I appreciated about the Browns, even though they still look like crap against the Bills. <laughs> they got the win. the win. They came over the win. But, like, the offense finally started getting Baker out in the space to throw the football instead of having him sit in the pocket and get balls batted down over and over again. Or he just overthrows the hell out of everybody because he has to throw it so much higher to get it over people's heads. I, I think we're learning first – that for a while we said, oh, Drew Brees is too short. You can't you can't get a short quarterback. And then Drew Brees is like, nope, I'm the best quarterback in football, or one of them. Yeah. And and so we said, oh, well, if Drew Brees can do it, anybody can do it. And then we got Baker, and we've got 
you know, uh, uh, what's his name, Kyler, and maybe it was too soon. Maybe Drew Brees is an anomaly. These guys can be good. I don't think they can be great. But I don't think they have to be great. I don't think he has to be great. I think he has to hit Odell I mean, I once think, or twice. Yeah, you put him in the right score. offense. You put I'm him in the right you, system. I'm going to be betting the under in this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to be betting the under. I think both of these defense are going to going to look really good against these offensive lines. And, and I mean, 21-17 still gives you an under. Yes. yes. So, I like it. I like Nobody it. Nobody hits the 20s. All right, so Browns minus three for you. I'll take it. Okay. Let's move on. The last of the five big games. The Bears at the Rams. The Rams are a six-and-a-half point favorite at Sunday night football. Total is 41-and-a-half. Rams have not looked very good lately. Nope. Bears got a win last week. That's right. But, I mean, what exactly what exactly did that win mean? You know, and I, I don't have a good answer. So I don't either. This is something that I normally like to do one thing, and then I'm going to do something different here. I love, 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 love when a big team gets blowed out, and then the other team that they're playing had a big win. They play each other because everyone's saying, oh, man, the Bears look so good. Oh, the Rams look so bad. You got to go Bears here, right? And then you see the line six and a half. Like, whoa, man, the Rams are still a big favorite. Normally, I would be heavy, heavy, heavy on the Rams. Bigly heavy, just because of that situation. Rams lost two more offensive linemen. They had lost the center before that game. They lost two more offensive linemen during that game against the Steelers. Those three guys I don't think are going to be back this week. Against this Bears front, I think it's over. I think it's a ball game. I think we're going to see, we're going to see the reason why the Rams messed up by paying off. All of these guys, so much money. They've got $20 million plus in Brandon Cooks, not going to play. $20 million plus in Gurley. I don't know if he's going to play or not. If he does play, he hasn't been very good anyway. they got $20 million plus in um, golf. He ain't looking good. No. they got $20 million plus in Donald, who's a stud. And if but he they, got no help. And he got no help. If they want to keep him. They're gonna have twenty million plus in um oh my god, my brain just went blank. Dude, they just traded for him. D B. One of the best DBs in the league. Brandon oh. Jack out of Jacksonville. Uh uh Jalen Ramsey. Thank you. Bingo. Thank you. Sorry. Man, my my brain went dead. It's a, um, we're, it's midnight on Tuesday. So night. anyway, we're, we're like, just they, trying to get through they, it. <laughs> they are so where are they gonna get the money to get the offensive line? Oh, we get a draft right. Oh no, no, we traded all you our You don't picks. have any picks. So we don't have any picks. You going you going to get a top tier offensive lineman in the third round? Cuz that's not where they come from. They usually come top round. So, um I, I just think I think this team is about to get into some dog days of the years. They made a run at the Super Bowl last year. I think they went all in to try to make a run this year. I think they're going to miss the playoffs and they don't have anything to rebuild with. They won't have cap. They don't have This is a team that needs to trade Donald because they have nothing else, and you can get a king's ransom for him. You've okay. been getting two firsts for most players. I would bet you that there's a franchise out there that would give you three for Donald. I never thought I'd say that. but That there, sounds absurd. There are some teams that don't care about the draft, my Patriots being one of them, and and that always seem to have cap room, my Patriots being one of them. And and I, those teams just – you know, if they got a first round pick, they don't give a shit. They're just going to have three guys in the third round, and you know it'll be fine. Um, I think that, and that's not just the Pats. There's a couple of teams out there that are like that. I think that buyer is out there somewhere, and that's the only way the rent. A, they free up all that money from from Donald, and they can get a king's ransom for him, so they can get cap space help and they can get draft pick help, which is two things they need desperately. That's desperately. Good point. But this week, that ain't going to happen. This week, it's not going to help him. Brandon Cooks ain't helping. He ain't coming. Last week, the best receiver on the field was Cooper Cup. Uh, Cooper. Cooper Cup. Yeah. Cooper Cup. Zero catches. Got blanked. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I just think this team struggles. I, I, so, Normally, we're both on. 
we're both on Bears to win. Yes, I think the Bears are going to win. Yes. Yeah, I get the same thing. I get, and I'm not Normally, big... I hate following the trend of this is the public team because they just won, and this is the public team that everyone hates because they just lost. I hate that. I hate that. And it might come back to bite me this week, but I'm we'll going to roll with it. I mean, I, I don't I think the Rams are very good. I way around that. I apologize. We took forever. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, we got a couple more to get to. These are the interesting mentions. So let's go ahead and hop into them. First one, Saints, just off a fresh blowout loss at home to the woeful Atlanta Falcons. The Saints are five-and-a-half-point favorites at the Bucks, And Tampa Bay gets to play at home two weeks in a row. It's kind of an anomaly for them. Yep. Bucks looked pretty good getting that, that win last week against the Cardinals. Had to drive late. Uh, Jameis somewhat took care of the football. I don't think he does it this week. Yeah. I mean, it's a different – the Saints defense is not the Bucks defense. No, I, I, mean, I, the, I think the, the Saints defense, defense – I think the Saints defense is pissed off. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. They just had Matt Ryan go wild on them. Yeah. And so, you got the a The Saints offensive game? line better get pissed off because they just gave up a – Ten sacks? Metric – it wasn't ten, but it was just a, a just a crap load of sacks. Yeah. Just a buckets and buckets of sacks. Yeah, they, they got embarrassed big I mean, time. they finished with? It was so, like seven. That's a divisional game – in this spot, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, next one up, Jags at the Colts, the six, Jaguars. They give six sacks. Six sacks. That's a lot. Jaguars, a three-point underdog at the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts got beat at home by the Dolphins last week. Yeah, this is and this line is going to change, and and everything about this game is is totally up in the air depending on what Jacoby Brissett does. From what I understand, he's not supposed to play again. Well, if he like don't this, play, this then they should not be a favorite to anybody. That's that's what I'm curious about. Like in this this game is up at at pretty much every book. No, yeah, I mean you can bet it. I just don't. know. I'm gonna. I would wait until Jacoby plays, and I'd like to see what the number is. If Jacoby plays, I would take the Colts. I think this this is what people thought was going to happen when Luck left the team. Yep, but Brissett was much more prepared. Nobody saw Brissett being this good. I believed in him. I liked his talent, and and I was able to capitalize on a lot of value early. Um, all that value is gone now, and uh, I need him to come back healthy before I get back on this Colts bandwagon because I will not put one red nickel on Brian Hoyer. On Brian Hoyer. I can understand that. I can understand it. All right, that's going to wrap up our NFL previews for week number 11. Of course, Go enter the weekly football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Of course, on the website, you can also get all of our stuff. Videos, podcasts, picks, previews, all of our social media platforms. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, etc. If you're on YouTube and you're watching us right now, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the show out with your friends, leave us some comments, tell us what you like about the show, what you don't like, tell us uh, what you think about the games this week. And if you are listening on the podcast, Hit subscribe there as well. And if you're on Apple, of course, leave us a five-star review. We always appreciate those. You guys have been fantastic. We're looking forward to another wonderful, fantastic, entertaining week of NFL football. And we will see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.